Hey everyone, Leaf Rider this binary here. In case you weren't aware, how we upload videos is going to change a little bit. Every other week we're going to do a fluffy week. Well, it's more or less going to be a free topic every second week, so that's going to be a thing. And this week is a fluffy week, although what I'm doing, what I'm going to do is not as fluffy as it probably could be because I'm going to read you a short story that I wrote, which is actually pretty intense and not really cute at all. But that's what I'm going to do anyway, because it's no secret of mine that I really want to be a published author, so like I write a whole bunch of shit and I really really like this story, so I'm going to share it with you. I'm going to link um, a Google Doc in the description if you want to read it for yourself instead of listening to me drone on and on and on. Trigger warning though, intense trigger warnings for a bunch of things. So if you're triggered by things like unreality, blood, self-harm insinuations, um, insinuations of child sexual abuse, stuff like that. The story is called Scarlet Lolita. <sighs> okay, let's do this. Light of your life, I became darkness to snuff your fire. My hair to raven, my clothes to night, my heart to coal, my eyes to dusk. My arm itches. I scratch idly while staring through the latched window into the, into the sky. Dark greys shelter the earth from the searing grin of the sun. No rain. How I long for rain to pour life upon me. Quench my thirst for feeling. The nurse enters. All bleached white uniform and plastic smile. Laying a hand on the foot of the bed, she greets me cheerily. Eerily. Her robotic mouth spits programmed words and automated pleasantries. I say nothing in reply. She checks the clipboard swinging from its metal hook, on which my name in spidery ink is scrawled across its surface. My name, the color of the blood in my throbbing veins. Lo, the name of my mind is suffering. The nurse checks my skin, checks the mechanics looped around my face like a feeble noose. Glancing at the untouched lunch, lunch tray beside me, she leaves without another word. I grip the white sheet. White sheets, white clothes, white room. Empty. Too bright. I desire nothing more than to tear it all down. Paint it black. Paint it the colour of my name. She enters. All wringing hands and woolen mind. Laying a hand on my shoulder, she murmurs clichés. She assures me I'm okay. It's time to go home. Home! You burnt the place as I drowned. With each gasp for breath, I inhaled your words of smoke. You left my body ravaged, burning in your fire. I gaze absentmindedly out the window as she drives me to the ruins of my haven. The streetlights flicker above me like miniature stars, seen from below murky water. A shadowed smile creeps across my dry lips. Is this life without you? Murky waters and faint light? She leads me inside, relief melting her face to see me standing without support in the ice-cold hall. She reaches for me. The chill in the air takes a physical form inside me. Relief is replaced with broken concern. She mutters something about the kitchen and leaves me. Dragging myself from the glacial room, I push myself upstairs, pulling my feet up each step. I see you as you are in every room. Translucent images drift through empty space. You are a poltergeist in the chambers of my being. Shall I never be free of your sinister entity? Door closed. Locked. Just like then. Who is that in the mirror? Black hair shrouds her dull eyes. Black clothes press against her thin frame. Curiosity. 
I swing the cabinet open to search for them. The only others to kiss my skin. Gone. I close the cabinet, finding my reflection watching me, devoid of expression. Laughter bubbles up in my throat, carrying with it the taste of sick. A giggle escapes my cracked lips. This is what you have made of me. Hot water. Bare skin. I watch the drain swallow the, bra the blackened water before stepping out. My skin is bit by, by the mites of cold air. Soft towels. Fresh clothes. She has made me a meal of colorful shapes. Each tastes of ash. She presents me with a steaming mug of chocolatey liquid. It tastes of blood. I stretch my broken lips into a rubbery smile. I am free. Am I not happy? I bid her good night. Although puzzled, she does not question me. Door closed. Locked. I do not sleep. I cannot sleep. You stare hungrily from the shadows in my closet. I slam the door on your red eyes. They glow from beneath the bed where you laid to waste my existence. It splinters and cracks before me. The vanity collapses. The closet and drawers explode. Clothing drifts through the room like dust. The door shrinks before my eyes, sinking into the floor. Your eyes are everywhere. I have no escape. You appear from every crevice of the room, examining every crevice of my skin. I find myself in the corner one foot pressed against a smooth surface. Pulling my tear-filled eyes down, I see myself in the, in the vanity mirror lying on the floor. You stand above me, reaching around me. A scream tears itself from my throat, shattering the glass, splintering my ankles. Wicked shards fly into the air, tearing at my tender flesh, painting the white walls. I hear her calling my name in fright, slamming fists against the bare wall where the door once stood. No escape. The window. I stagger across the debris, beating away your grabbing hands, shielding my face from your probing eyes. Tugging at the latch, I throw the window open, knocking loose one of the fragile panes of glass. It drifts into the sky above me, below me, the void all around. She screams my name, rattling the walls in her desperation to break in. You fill the room, driving me through the small frame of empty space. I gaze down at the blackness below. You whisper tenderly in my ear, caressing me with your razor-sharp tongue. I must escape you, properly this time. Necromancer to my living death no more. I leap into the suspended world. Gliding through the air as though through water, I leave glistening ribbons, the color of my name, trailing above me. At last I am free of you, a nymphette to a frosted flower. I wonder, by which name shall you remember me, Scarlet or Lolita? So that is my short story, Scarlet Lolita, that I wrote kind of recently. Which I'm very proud of because it's really good, although it's really intense. So, yeah, this video is not so fluffy, but I wanted to do that, so I did. So keep an eye out for everyone else's videos this week, this fluffy week. We'll be doing these every other week. Yeah. Okay. Bye. I hope your day is as beautiful as you are.